Okay. Uh, your capo is going to be on the second fret for this one. Tune is going to be D A D G A E. So you're going to tune your E string down to a D. And then you're going to tune your B string down to an A relative to the capo. So it should sound like this. With your capo on the second fret. I'm going to go through the little intro riff first, which is the. Etc. Because that's also the verses, which is nice. There's like a slight variation. Sometimes she does. Sometimes when I see her play live, it's the exact same as how she plays in the intro. So, but yeah, it's essentially the same riff. So to start that, you're gonna go first finger, seventh fret, A string, third finger, ninth fret, D string, pinky, ninth fret, B string. And then you're gonna alternate between your uh, A string and D string, and then play your B string. Give it some good vibrato because that's how she plays it. You can kind of hear it the way she does it in the recording. So you're going to go, and then the next part you're going to play two times it's uh, open G string, A string, B string. You're going to do that twice. So all together it is. And after that, you're gonna hit your B string, bend it up a half step, bend it back down, and then release it. So it's, you gotta bend and a pull off, so. If you do it fast enough, it's just, you know, you can also take the rest of the chord off. You can hear it ringing when she plays it, so she just does it without taking the rest of the chord off. But if it's too hard, you can totally get away with doing that. But you can definitely hear her going. But yeah, that's the first part. Into the next part, you're basically going to take these two fingers how they are and just switch them. So third finger, ninth fret, A string. First finger, seventh fret, D string. And then pinky is going to be ninth fret, G string. And then you're going to do the same A, D, A alternation. And then you're going to hit your G string. So it's your first four note sequence. And then you're going to hit the G string again, but you're going to take your pinky off. And then you're going to go A string into D string. So all together. And then you're going to go G string again with your pinky still off, A string, and then G string with your pinky back on the ninth fret. So all that's all together. And then the last part, you're going to take your pinky back off, strum your G string, strum your A string, and then just take the chord off and go for your D string. Because the whole chord gets taken off because she plays that D while she's moving to a different chord. So she'll go, the whole thing is. So it goes. So all together, that first uh, intro riff, or how it's played in the intro, is... So that's going to be, there's going to be like two different cycles through the first little intro chord sequence and that's going to be how it starts both times, exactly the same. So after that you go to your first chord, which is 5-5, five, five, open, 4, open, open. And you're going to play the 5th fret E and A string with your uh, middle finger and 3rd finger. And then your 4th fret on the G string with your 1st finger. And the struggling pattern is just kind of like a down, down, up, down, down, rest, down, down, up. 
The drumming pattern isn't really consistent, it kind of varies throughout the verse. You just kind of got to listen for it and listen to where she's muting and just walk it with your hand and mute. So you're going to take this chord and then slide it just up two frets. So it's 7-7, seven, seven, open, 6, right? Five, five, yeah. Seven seven open six open open five five open four open open. I'm gonna slide it up to this, slide it back down, but with this drumming pattern. So like, and she makes a habit of changing how she plays songs live every night. So there's no real, like, correct way to play it. I guess the studio version, but she'll play it differently all the time so as long as it feels kind of right with the uh, drums and stuff then you'll be fine so she does that holds it and she goes right back into this which I'm not gonna play again she's going right, right, right back into this part and then she, when she comes out of it again instead of sliding up it's gonna be like a picked pattern with your uh, pinky and third finger on the fourth fret of the A and D string and then your first finger on the second fret of the G string and you're gonna go uh, A, D, G, D so and then after that you're gonna take your pinky off and you're going to slide these two back up and then replace your uh, middle finger on the E string 5th fret which makes the first chord so it's after you play this chord you just kind of take your pinky off and slide it back up and remake the first chord so all together the, uh, the intro before she starts singing is I messed up a couple times, but you get the point. So then she starts singing, and it's just, oh, don't say it now. Same thing with these little, um, this little riff, except for she won't go. At that part, usually, she'll just keep on going, like, oh, don't say it. So she'll just play that one more time instead of dealing with that and timing it with the singing so she'll just go oh, don't say it. and then the transition she'll play the G string back into this part which is the same that part doesn't really change so it's oh, don't say it now Back to this chord. Don't just give up. It's exactly the same as it is in the intro without her singing. Move from your old house. Same stuff. The city pick pattern can be so loud. The chord part that you're doing is exactly the same as the intro, but this part, the only difference is she's not going. She's going. Usually. Usually. Sometimes she'll do it. And then into the chorus can be so loud. You're going to be here after that. You're going to slide back up to the 7th fret shape of this chord. Stay there. Say what you gotta. Back down to the original chord. Back up to the 7th. Sleeping somehow. 
And it's like, that's the shortened version of the chorus that she plays the first time. But when she plays the second chorus, it's the same thing, you know? Leave things on speaking terms And I'll see... That's a different chord coming up, but the second chorus is just this. So when we get to the second chorus, just remember that. And then she gets out of the first chorus. Sleeping somehow. Back down the original chord and then just back to this riff. Exactly the same as it is. So that's just five, back up to the seven, down to the five, and hold it there until she starts singing again. And then she starts back with this. Lose sight of wherever you are. Do you know? And then this is a little bit different. Do you know? Back to the fifth fret shape. But instead of sliding it up to the seventh and going down here, she goes from the fifth fret shape, and she'll take her so instead of this shape, it's this shape. It's basically extended one fret. So she takes her pinky and third finger and slides them to nine and nine on the low E and A strings. And then the D string will be open. And then your first finger will be on the G string on the seventh fret. So you go. And then slide that back down to the, your normal 7th fret shape of this chord. 7, 7, open, 6, open, open. So this is going to be 9, 9, open, 7, open, open. So she'll go. Yeah. Do you know when you've gone too far? And then she'll end it by going back to that. Is it all? So do you know when you've gone too far? Is it all? And this is back to the original, um, this part. Ash and dust. But she gets a lot sloppier with it here, live and on the recording. So instead of just picking, like, individual notes, you can just just kind of strum whatever you want but keep the same chord shapes but you don't have to like a robot she gets a lot sloppier with it so is it all ash and dust? Mm -hmm. so that's kind of a difference there but it's the same exact chord shapes and then the part where it's um Ash and dust, I won't let you take me for a ride. Is very different. It's the exact same chord shape as that thing. So you're gonna get your fingers set like you're about to play that. And you're gonna go A, D, and then. So it's down, up, down, take your pinky off, down, so. pinky off and then from there you're gonna go back to this the nine nine open seven open open from earlier and then you're gonna go back down to the seventh fret chord our old friend so that whole verse with all its weirdness is Lose sight of Back up. Is it all ash and dust? Well, then I won't let you take me for a ride. And you stay on this, and then it's into the chorus. Say what you got up. Just back and forth. Somehow, exactly like the first chorus, have the lyrics pulled up. 
leave things on speaking terms Then I'll see you around Different chords So that's the last chorus Just the same alternation from earlier And then the next chord You're gonna go um, third finger on the seventh fret of the A string Pinky on the seventh fret of the G string, and then your first finger is going to go between those on the fifth fret of the D string. So it goes, and I'll see you around right into that. And then this chord, I'm just going to teach both chord transitions right now. It's either going to go up. Or it's going to go down, but instead of just shifting, so you just slide this whole thing up two frets when you do that. Or when it goes down, you don't just slide it down one fret, you slide the whole thing down one fret, and then instead of having your third finger here, you're going to have your second finger play one fret lower. So it goes from two. So it's seven, five, seven, two, six. No, no, no. Five, four, six on the A, D, G strings. So it's going to go, you go through this little cycle three times. So the first time you're going to go to that. The second time you're going to go up and the third time you're going to go back down. And you'll see what I mean. So coming out of the chorus, it's... I'll see you around this chord. We're gonna go to the down version of it. Then we're gonna do this thing. Back again from the last verse, so just down, up, down, up, if you remember that. And back to this chord, the one that on, on, on the ninth fret with the seventh fret on the G string. And then back to the first chord we played after the chorus, the 7571. Then back to this chord from the original, 7 7, open 6. So all together, that's after the chorus. I'll see you around. And that's going to repeat three times with the exception of instead of this going down, it's going to go up in the middle one. So that's when she starts singing after she... She'll play it one time through and then she'll start singing, so she'll go... See you around. She'll go... Is it all? Slide up two frets. Everything else is the same. And I won't let you take me for a ride. And then again. Is it all down over us? Well, then I won't let you take me for a ride. And then she's gonna go from this chord, the 757 one, back to the 77 open six, open open one. Just back and forth, and that's when she goes. And then back and forth one more time. That's that part. And then to end it, the outro, she just does the exact same thing as the intro. So she go. So that's exactly the same as the intro, and on the studio version, she ends it by going, she slides back up, back down. Just exactly the same as the intro. That's how she does on the studio version. Most of the times I see her play it live, she ends up by going. 
and down and picking this thing. So you can really do it either way you want. If you want to do the studio version, it ends like this. that's the song it's pretty tough and pretty tough to teach because there's a lot of different weird moving parts if you have questions please let me know I appreciate it